Hi, I'm professional photographer Lynn Chamberlain. Welcome back to this series of videos that's uh, designed to teach you to be a better photographer. We're going to continue our discussion on exposure. This time we're going to explore shutter speed. We've talked about ISO, which is the sensitivity of, sensitivity of the sensor. We've talked about aperture, which is the opening of the lens. Shutter speed represents the amount of time that light is allowed to hit that sensor. So the aperture controls the amount of light, shutter controls how long it strikes the sensor, and ISO controls the sensitivity of the sensor. And all three of these work together in order to properly expose your image. Shutter speed, like aperture, is also represented by fractions of a second this time. The fractions, uh, if you take the number represented by the shutter and put a, a shutter speed and put a one over the top of it, you get a fraction of a second, which is what, uh, what the, the duration that that shutter will be open. So a shutter speed of 200, for example, is actually one two hundredth of a second. A shutter speed of a thousand is one one thousandth of a second. A shutter speed of four is one fourth of a second. Cameras today are amazing in that they go all the way up to two thousand, four thousand, and even an eight thousandth of a second, which is incredibly fast and doesn't allow a lot of time for that light to pass through. Now the shutter speed is important because it allows you to control either the movement or the motion that is involved in a scene. There are some times when you'll want to have things stopped perfectly still. There are other times when a little implied motion by a little bit of blur caused by a slower shutter speed can be very nice in a photograph. So the slower the shutter speed, the more motion that is allowed to happen while that shutter is open and it will cause just a little bit of blur, sometimes a lot of blur, on an image. Uh, a faster shutter speed will not allow any motion to occur on, while that shutter is open. And because of that, you get crisp, clear, sharp images uh, with no motion involved, for example, stopping water drops in midair, or stopping a bicycle as it's riding down the street, or a race car as it passes in front of you, or uh, a waterfall with the droplets, or any number of things that you might want to stop motion. What I'd like to do as part of this demonstration is go outside and actually find something that's moving and demonstrate to you how shutter speed works to either imply the motion in the image or to completely stop the motion in the image. One of the best ways I know of to demonstrate shutter speed is with moving water. This little waterfall is very close to my home, very beautiful, lots of green, lots of water, and uh, can make a very nice photograph. What I want to do is slow down the shutter speed so that the water has an opportunity to move through the frame while the shutter's open, creating a really soft look to the water and then we'll try it with a faster shutter speed and stop some of the droplets in midair. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so in order to slow down the shutter speed, I've got the ISO turned down on the camera, so the sensitivity sensitivity of the sensor is fairly low, which requires a longer shutter speed. Uh, my shutter is running open at a quarter of a second. So during that one-fourth of a second, the water has a chance to move quite a ways, really, through the frame and create that soft, watery look. Now let's try it. Let's bump it up. So we'll turn up the, the ISO. We'll go up to 3200 on the ISO. That'll allow the shutter speed to come up much faster and stop some of these droplets. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, that's a shutter speed of a 50th of a second. Same composition, same lens, same aperture, different shutter speed. You'll see the difference in the photograph. Well, that pretty well wraps up our discussion on shutter speed. To this point, we've talked about three things, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. All three of those things work together to control the amount of light that exposes your digital sensor. 
In our next video, we're going to come back and talk about how the three of those can be used together in order for you to create the exact image that you might have in your mind.